Egypt's most untouched mummy is not famous for a curse, but for a mystery no one dared disturb. Experts swore the linen was too delicate and the burial style was too rare to risk. Yet thousands of other mummies were unwrapped without hesitation. So why has this masterpiece, 2,300 years old, remained sealed for over a century? The answer lies hidden inside a geometric wrap, engineered to protect a secret Egypt never expected. Tonight, we will finally reveal what the scans uncovered. In official statements, Egypt's leading archaeologists have always used the language of caution when discussing the Bashiri mummy. Museum placards and press releases describe it as too delicate for direct study, a specimen whose linen wrappings are so fragile that even the lightest touch risks irreversible loss. Conservation reports refer to the burial style as unique in the archaeological record, emphasizing that no similar geometric wrap has ever been found. The linen, they say, is not just old, it is irreplaceable, woven in a pattern that exists nowhere else in Egypt. Specialists point to the pyramid-shaped folds on the face and torso, noting that these are not decorative, but structural. They warn that the resin-soaked bands have chemically bonded to each other and to the body within, creating a single interlocked shell. Any attempt to separate the layers, even for sampling or cleaning, could cause the entire form to collapse. The phrase, catastrophic failure, appears in internal conservation notes, always in the context of what might happen if the wrappings are disturbed. Public interviews with curators echo these warnings. One senior Egyptologist described the Bashiri mummy as the only surviving example of a lost art and cautioned that to unwrap it would be to erase a chapter of human ingenuity. In press briefings, museum officials have repeated that the risk is not just to the artifact, but to the knowledge it represents. The linens weave, the precise angles of each fold, and the depth of resin penetration are all cited as reasons for restraint. International conservation standards reinforce this approach. Guidelines from UNESCO and the International Council of Museums urge non-invasive study for any artifact with unique or unrepeatable features. The Bashiri mummy, with its singular wrapping technique and unknown embalming formula, is held up as a textbook case for these protocols. Conservators also reference the lessons of the past. After the disastrous unwrapping of other royal mummies, most famously King Tutankhamun, public opinion shifted toward preservation over spectacle. Reports from the Egyptian Museum in Cairo highlight how the Bashiri mummy became a symbol of this new philosophy. Instead of risking destruction for the sake of discovery, curators opted for patience, insisting that the integrity of the original must come before the pursuit of knowledge. Statements about delicacy and irreplaceability are woven through every official explanation. The burial style is called one of a kind. The linen is described as unmatched in its engineering. The risk of unwrapping is labeled unacceptable. These statements, repeated over decades, have shaped the public's understanding of why the Bashiri mummy remains untouched. On the surface, it is a story of caution and respect, of experts refusing to gamble with a masterpiece of ancient science. Inside the conservation labs, the Bashiri mummy has always been more than a relic. It's a puzzle that defies every conventional tool. Engineers and textile specialists brought in to assess the mechanics of its wrappings found themselves staring at a geometry no one had encountered before. The linen is not arranged in the familiar crisscross bands seen on royal mummies or the simple spirals of lesser burials. Instead, each layer is folded into a pyramid-shaped grid, with every band tucked, overlapped, and pressed into place at precise angles. The result is a shell that acts less like fabric and more like an engineered vault. Conservators studying the structure describe it as a stress-coupled shell. When pressure is applied to one part of the wrap, it redistributes across a network of folds and tucks, much like the load paths in a geodesic dome. The outermost layers on the face and chest are folded at 45 and 90 degrees, locking into the next band beneath them. 
Each pad and band is set not just for coverage, but for reinforcement, overlapping at the joints, buttressing the limbs, and maintaining the flat, squared appearance that gives the mummy its distinctive form. Textile microscopy and digital models reveal that the linen itself is woven at a density unmatched in museum collections, over 80 threads per centimeter in some places. The bands are not simply wrapped, but interlocked, with the ends tucked beneath previous layers and fixed in place with resin. This resin, now polymerized and brittle after centuries, fuses the linen into a single rigid mass. Where the linen crosses itself, CT scans show up to six overlapping bands per layer, each one adding to the overall strength of the shell. Attempts to model the structure using finite element analysis produced a clear warning. Removing even a single major band causes the tension to collapse, triggering a chain reaction of failure across the shell. The wrap acts as a kind of burial trap, its own form of ancient engineering designed to resist disturbance. Unwrapping it is not just a matter of peeling back fabric, it is a mechanical challenge where every centimeter holds the entire structure in balance. Traditional unwrapping tools, scalpels, tweezers, even micro-vacuums are useless here. The linen is too tightly interwoven, the resin too deeply set. One conservator, after examining the wrap under magnification, compared it to the stress lines in a suspension bridge. Every part depends on every other. Cut one, and the rest will fail. This is not a theoretical risk. It is a documented property of the design, confirmed by both digital simulation and the physical evidence of the wrap itself. No one can say for certain whether this engineering was meant to deter tomb violators, serve a ritual purpose, or simply represent the pinnacle of a lost embalming craft. But the result is the same. The Bashiri mummy is locked in a shell that cannot be opened without destroying the very thing that makes it unique. For conservators and engineers alike, the message is clear. Until technology can see through linen without touching it, the secret will remain sealed. A digital cross-section of the Bashiri mummy reveals a world sealed for over two millennia. Beneath the rigid lattice of linen and resin, the scans show the unmistakable form of a man, shoulders squared, arms crossed over his chest, legs straight and close together. His height, measured at roughly 167 centimeters, matches the average for a Ptolemaic elite. The bones are slender and well-preserved, with the jawline still defined beneath layers of fabric and hardened balm. Hidden just beneath the wrappings, a faint inscription appears, its strokes blurred by resin and time. Egyptologists debate its reading. Some suggest the characters might spell out a name, Pacheri, or perhaps Nen. But so far, no one can say for certain. The identity remains a mystery, as elusive as the technique that preserved him. What is clear, even through the haze of ancient script, is that this was no ordinary burial. The geometry of the wrappings, the depth of the resin, and the care in placement all point to someone of wealth and standing. The scan reveals treasures untouched since the Ptolemaic era. Amulets, small dense objects that show up bright white against the gray of bone, are nestled at the throat and over the heart. One, shaped like a hawk's head, rests at the center of the chest, its outline crisp even after centuries. Another, a lotus ring, circles the left index finger. Strings of beads, some likely gold and others faience, are woven between the linen folds at the neck and wrists. Each artifact is positioned with purpose, following a ritual logic known only to the embalmers who placed them. Jewelry and charms are not the only discoveries. The scans pick up dense patches along the jaw and teeth, evidence of dental pads or resin plugs used to reinforce the mouth for eternity. In the abdomen, faint outlines suggest the placement of botanical bundles, possibly herbs or scented woods meant to purify and protect. Every object, every placement, tells a story of careful preparation, of specialists working in concert, embalmers, jewelers, priests, and perhaps even physicians. The Bashiri mummy's interior is a catalog of ancient expertise. 
Its linen shell hides not just a body, but a network of objects and materials, each chosen, crafted, and positioned for reasons lost to time. The man inside remains unnamed, but his status is written in gold, stone, and the geometry of the wrap itself. For the first time, modern technology allows his story to be read without breaking a single thread. Across Egypt, a pattern began to surface, one that pointed to a hidden world of ancient specialists. CT scans of untouched mummies, like Iset Keb, reveal a web of expertise far beyond a single embalmer's skill. In Iset Keb's case, the wrappings form a concentric banding, not the geometric vault of Bashiri, but still layered with intent. Amulets rest at the throat and ankles, beads are woven between the folds, and resin saturation varies by region, thicker at the chest, lighter at the limbs. Each detail hints at a different hand, a different role, one person weaving, another applying resin, a third placing charms with ritual precision. When radiologists compared the internal structures of Bashiri and Iset Keb, the similarities were striking, yet the differences were even more telling. Both mummies preserved dental pads, botanical bundles, and metal amulets, but Bashiri's linen density and resin depth stand in a class of their own. CT metrics show Bashiri's outer bands at over 80 threads per centimeter, with resin layers penetrating deeper than any other scanned mummy from the period. The pyramid pattern is unique, but the presence of amulets, jewelry, and medical interventions, like dental packing, recurs in elite burials across the Ptolemaic world. These findings suggest a network of collaboration. Embalmers, textile weavers, metal workers, and priests all contributed their expertise. Dental pathology visible in the scans, decay filled with resin, jaw supports placed under the gums, points to the involvement of ancient dentists. Botanical traces in the abdomen align with the work of herbalists and temple botanists. Even the placement of beads and rings follows a logic known from priestly manuals, though the precise sequence is lost. The Bashiri mummy, then, is not an isolated marvel. It stands at the intersection of a lost guild system, an organized web of craftspeople whose skills converged for a single purpose, to build an indestructible tomb around the body. Iset Keb's burial, with its careful layering and embedded charms, supports this view. So do the remains of workshop sites at Saqqara, where tools, linen samples, and resin jars bear the marks of specialized labor. What emerges from these digital autopsies is a portrait of ancient Egypt's silent workforce. Their legacy survives in thread counts, resin signatures, and the engineered complexity of mummies like Bashiri. The fear of unwrapping is not just about a single object, but about losing the last living record of a collaborative tradition, one that connected embalmers, artisans, and healers in a network as intricate as the wrappings themselves. Inside the museum, the debate over the Bashiri mummy reached a fever pitch, not just among curators, but in the pages of policy documents and the corridors of international exhibitions. Requests arrived from abroad asking to borrow the mummy for world tours or to allow visiting scholars to perform limited sampling. Letters from foreign museums, academic consortia, and private collectors pressed for access, each promising new insights or technological breakthroughs. Yet every proposal landed on the same impassable wall, a refusal anchored in the language of risk. In closed-door meetings, the lead conservator argued that the Bashiri mummy represented an irreversible threshold. The phrase irreconcilable risk circulated in internal discussions, not as a slogan, but as a grim calculation. One mistake, and the world would lose the only surviving evidence of a lost, embalming science. This was not just about the physical object, it was about the collapse of an entire chapter of ancient knowledge, techniques, materials, and craftsmanship never recorded in any manual or inscription. The conservator's stance was shaped by the failures of the past. After the irreversible damage done to other royal mummies, the Bashiri case became a rallying point for a new generation of preservationists. 
The weight of responsibility pressed down on the conservation team. Every decision was measured against the possibility of permanent loss. Even the act of opening a display case for routine inspection became a source of anxiety. Outside, the pressure only grew. Journalists called for transparency. Donors hinted at funding tied to public access. Inside the museum, the answer remained unchanged. The Bashiri mummy would not be touched. Not for science, not for spectacle, not for profit. The lead conservator's voice carried the final word. The risk could not be reconciled with the duty to protect. The moral weight of that decision would soon be tested in the starkest possible terms. Cutting the first linen band would release a tension that has held for 23 centuries. The geometric shell, engineered to distribute pressure across every fold, would lose its balance in an instant. As the blade passes through a single band, the surrounding linen, locked in a network of overlapping pads and resin, begins to shift. Resin, once a liquid shield, has hardened into a brittle glaze. The first breath of air against an exposed seam triggers a rapid series of cracks. Ancient balm, stable only in darkness, starts to fracture along the cut edge. Within minutes, the rigid shell that once protected the body becomes a patchwork of splintered linen and shattered resin. The collapse does not stop at the surface. As the structure sags, the intricate pyramid pattern on the face and chest buckles inward. Pads beneath the outer bands, no longer anchored, slip and fold under their own weight. The face covering, unique in all of Egypt, tears across its centerline. The support that once held bones and artifacts in place vanishes. Bones, preserved in perfect alignment for generations, shift and settle. Embedded amulets, once suspended in precise ritual order, scatter into the debris. A lotus ring tumbles free from the left hand, beads roll into the cavity of the chest, and the hawk-shaped amulet cracks against the ribs. What began as a single incision ends as a total collapse. The evidence of a lost embalming science, thread count, resin formula, artifact placement, vanishes in a matter of minutes. There is no way back. The Bashiri mummy's secret, once disturbed, would be erased forever. Today, digital scans reveal secrets that linen once guarded for millennia. But for every Bashiri mummy preserved, thousands of ancient techniques remain lost or fragile, reminding us that each irreversible choice in preservation shapes what humanity can recover tomorrow. In an era of rapid technology, the real artifact is knowledge itself, always one decision away from vanishing. What would you risk to protect a single, irreplaceable piece of our shared past?